Now, I'm going to come to certain events, and at this time, I have to give a warning to my public gallery. The events that we're about to hear now are deeply distressing. They relate to the death of an animal. If anybody feels they'd like to leave my court because it's too distressing to hear, any member of the public gallery is welcome to leave now. Denise, you're on holiday. Things are OK between the 5th and the 7th. You've no reason to believe that there was a problem. Well, on the... Um... 8th of February, I hadn't heard anything from David at all. And I remember texting at something like 20 past three in the afternoon, Barbados time, to say, is everything OK? I couldn't settle. I just couldn't settle because I hadn't heard anything. So my husband, Peter, he went off to the beach. He said, well, I'm not going to hang about. I'll go off to the beach. And I, as I say, couldn't settle. And then I got... Uh, a message to say that um, Delphi was dead. And then that was followed by some horrendous pictures. And I can just remember absolutely losing the plot. I was screaming like a mad woman because my husband wasn't there. And I went out onto the balcony where we were stopping and I was just yelling before him. I couldn't believe it. It was like my worst nightmare. Um, my heart had been ripped out. <laughs> and um, he came up to me and said, well, now it's wrong. And I said that Delphi was dead and showed him the photos and we were just, the pair of us, we were just sobbing. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. The first thing I need to see is the text message. Hello, Denise and Peter. Oh, my God, I'm sorry to have to tell you this. We left at 11 a.m. to visit Manchester. We got caught in traffic coming home and got back at 4.30, that's 16.30, to find Delphi dead on the kitchen floor. Maria still twisted her collar in her jaw. They'd obviously had a fight, and Delphi's body was already stiff and cold. Maria is looking mortified. We are truly sorry to have to give you this dreadful news. Sir, did you send photographs of the body? I did. I sent photographs of the scene we encountered on our return to the home. You received post-mortem results from the vet on the 13th of February, very soon after the incident. That stated that the reason that the dog had been killed was as a result of a broken bone in the neck of the dog. Yes, Judge. Was the vet, I want to be clear, was the vet able to give any other indication of how it happened, other than to say that the dog's neck was broken? Not as such, um, sir. He just said it could have been caused by over-boisterous play, um, but he said he couldn't substantiate anything. The term of the contract that we hold to be effective to us as a consumer is that the promise that our home, and of course our dogs, will not be left any longer than four hours. Thank you very much. You are referring to section 22 of the agreement of which you agreed to. House sitter and home sitters, as a subcontractor, and not as an employee, brackets, as a house sitter, not being absent from the home of the homeowner client for more than four hours. Sir, the evidence provided by Denise shows that on the fifth you were out for four hours and on the eighth you were out for in excess of six hours. Yes. Do you accept that that's a breach of section 22 of your agreement, sir? No, I do not, Judge. Why not? Because Clause 22 is relevant to the house sitters. It's contractual between the house sitter and house and home sitters. It is not contractual between the homeowner client and house and home sitters. I do not understand that submission at all. Judge, I have to say that I'm really getting the impression that this case has been prejudged. Oh, no. 
we are cherry picking. We are taking one clause in the terms of service. What about the other clauses? I have one question about that particular clause, which is why are you not the house sitter in respect of that clause? I was a house sitter in respect of that clause. Thank you, sir. Denise, what are you suing David for, please, madam? I'm suing him for uh, £540, which is the amount that we paid for the house sitting contract. Thank you. This is not a case about negligence. What I'm faced with here is an application brought by you, Denise, for breach of contract. David provided you with agreed terms and conditions which you specifically agreed to. In particular, section 22 of that agreement, which specified that the person looking after your dog would not leave the dog for more than four hours. David did leave the dog for more than four hours. I am satisfied on balance that the service that Denise paid for, she did not receive. And consequently, she's entitled in law to a refund of £540. Thank you, Judge. If you enjoyed that video, then I strongly suggest clicking here for more highlights. For those of you who haven't subscribed yet, and why not, so that you never miss out, subscribe, clicking down there. That's an order.